Hey everyone. Hey JC. Hello. Hello. <laughs> How are you doing, Ski? I'm fine, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. So welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. This is uh, yeah. We haven't done an FFL for a while, have we? About two years, I think we were. <laughs> we, were we were talking about it about two years. So it's our first FFL back. Yeah. Well, it coincides with the first week of term as well. So out, out there, we've got lots of uh, lecturers busy teaching. Uh, blended learning. Blended learning. Yeah. Lots of cameras. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, social physical distancing in the classroom yeah but making sure students can get all the best yeah. uh, but it, it's great i think students are having a, a great experience yeah absolutely uh starting to work here on the new term and uh, towards the degree yeah um yeah i suppose we're just trying to find our kind of you know whatever normality we can really yeah um, absolutely, absolutely. Um, but it's great to be back and you know we're we're, we're kind of uh, we're here yeah and there's been a lot of stuff happening over the last six months that since uh, yeah. the whole situation started here yeah. in the UK. There's been a lot of exciting product out there. Absolutely. On, on the hardware synth uh, yeah. and everything. And I suppose one of them that I made a bit of noise uh, was the Luna. Yes. New system. Well, we were both very excited as UAD as users. As UAD users, we were really excited about it. I think both yeah. of us downloaded it literally yeah. on the day. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, so today's about Luna. We've had a chance to play a little bit, although not too much. Yeah. I, I don't know about you, but uh, we spent maybe a day each on uh, with, with it a little bit to, to get a sense for it. I'm I'm definitely kind of still at that learning phase. You know, um, I'm going to be making a video actually next week, yes. so this is going to be really useful for me to kind of find out a bit more about it and uh, and hear it in action as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, and also maybe try out some of the some of the some of the instruments. Absolutely. As well. So I mean, today I think it's more about looking a little bit at what is Luna. I mean, there's a lot of videos out there, so people who have, were interested would already have a very clear idea. Yeah. But we wanted to put our take on it in terms of where does it sit, yeah. even in what we do at Pond Lake, for example. Mm. You know, we teach Logic, Ableton, yeah. Pro Tools. Yeah. Where would Luna sit yeah. I, 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 in that pattern, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, uh, based on you know, the fact that what we're teaching is transferable skills, isn't it? So, you know, as much as we, you know, we do teach certain or you know, using certain doors yeah. you know those those you know, once you once you master one you know you can understand another and get to use it uh, abs absolutely yeah. and i think that's the thing about luna is the first time i opened it up i didn't read the manual and it felt okay i still can i can get going with it i think that's, that's it, always a sign of good well-designed software if it's it? intuitive it's intuitive yeah uh, if you've used logic or pro tools before i mean especially pro tools in, there are similarities mm. uh, one of the main thing is the two window isn't it only yeah. two windows yeah which uh, many people like because it makes it easier as a workflow you're literally going from your arrange page to your mixing page mm. uh, just on the click and, and and that's the same shortcut as, as pro tools as well so yeah. i would imagine people coming from pro tools will find it very natural and, and easy to so it's interesting that Luna, they call UA called Luna a recording system rather than a DAW. Yeah. Uh, maybe because it's the beginning of it and they feel that they're still at version one. Yeah. Although they've upgraded like updates coming on, coming out monthly. Yeah. So they've been really proactive in yeah. terms of bringing new features very quickly. Yeah. And I'm sure they're reacting to lots of feedback as well. They're, you know, super engaged, aren't they? With so the I think the community is really involved and, uh, and the pro community in terms of shaping that software I yeah think, uh, it's already based on a lot of feedback yeah. and i think the, the main thing about luna is obviously it's free mm. if you have a uad sound card but yeah. even the smaller one the arrow it is free and i think just based on that it's worth just using it and trying it out to see for yourself i mean uh, the way i see it is we've got two type of producers usually the one who stick to one deep though and that's all they're gonna use. Either it's Ableton, Logic, and they'll never go out of that. And mm. it's, it's fine, it's whatever works for you. Or you've got the people who like to maybe do certain tasks in certain platform. Mm. It may be that they do certain thing in Ableton, they end up mixing in Pro Tools or doing other thing in Logic or, you know. Mm. And I think for those people, Luna has a place, has totally a place. It's easy to come in and out of Luna, exporting, mm. importing things into it. And, and one of the things that Luna is trend is, is the integration with the hardware, isn't it? Mm. It is at that price range. If you buy a, an Arrow, for example, and Luna is free, at that price range, it's really the only system that gives you a system with hardly no latency. Yeah. Which, which before that 
Pro Tools was the only one. Be, uh, a Pro Tools HDX is the only way you can do that, mm. or real hardware. Otherwise, Logic, Ableton, any sound card, even using the Apollo with Logic, you had to use console. Yeah. Dropping in is not that convenient. Mm. You could monitor no latency, but the dropping in aspect. Yeah. What I loved about it is I recorded just a few things, and straight away I was like, it feels like a tape machine, yeah. like a console. You know, uh, shall we have a look quickly maybe at the, the signal flow, for example? I'd love to, yeah. And just to say as well, um, I'm monitoring the chat here. So okay. if anyone has any questions as we're going, put them in the chat and uh, we And can we can talk about it, yeah, yeah absolutely. So the, the, the great thing about Luna is, you see, it's, it, the work, the signal flow is very clear. If you look at the mixer here, you've got the inputs here and you can select what it's going to be. So you could say mic input or virtual. So you could root inside. Uh, so if you were there, and then you're going to have your unison, your pad. It's very much feel like the top of a mixing console. Mm. And then after that, you've got your record effects. So you can record effects with Luna directly. So they're printed. Mm. It has to be DSP. So therefore, there have to be UAD plugins for that purpose. Uh, but it makes sense. But that means you can print them. So that that. For me, it's coming back to that way of recording, the art of recording, of shaping the sound at the source mm. rather than just put a mic in and then fix it with 25 plugins at the mix. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's also you're, you're committing to a sound, aren't you, as well? Yeah. You know, which I suppose now there's so much flexibility that people are maybe scared to do that. It's like, let's just you know, record something completely dry and then we can affect and it afterwards. Absolutely. Whereas yeah. here, you can really shape it with your mic preamp, the unison. It could be an Eve, an API, an SSL, mm. uh, an LA2A if it's a vocal, or 1176. I mean, you can shape your sound as we used to in the studios. Mm. And then you would still shape it at the mix, but it's a, a process that feels quite natural. It yeah. feels. And then you've got the tape. Uh, and that tape row here is the extension. So there's two things that they, they, the one thing they've introduced in Luna is those extensions that are not plugins as such, in the sense that they're not loading on the DSP of the card, but they're loading on the CPU of your computer. Right. Like any AU plugins or VST plugins normally. Yeah. Uh, and those types are great. And we'll, we'll talk about it a bit more as uh, very sweet. And then you've got all your normal inserts. Your inserts, when you record, are not recorded, but they're there for monitoring. And what's great about Luna is it's not only UAD plugin, it's open to any AU plugins. So you can put your favorite sound toys, your favorite waves, yep. your favorite fab filters, yeah. you know, all those great plugins, manufacturers. You can bring them in into your project. That's great. And it's the same for instruments. So you can have your contact, mm. you can have all your soft synths, the Roland Cloud, you know, all the Arturia, uh, as well as some of the instruments that Luna yeah. have, uh, have designed, which are extensions again. So that, 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 that's for that. One of the main, the cool thing about Luna I find is the file system. Yesterday I sent you the session. You did, you sent it to me uh, kind of, yeah, 10 o'clock in the evening, um, the session we're going to be looking at yeah. because I wanted to have a look and it came through and I just, it loaded up. I mean, it's, it's that thing, isn't it, of like being a file. And it's if you wanna, one file, everything is in there. Yeah, if you want to see what's in it, you have to do show package contents yeah. and then, it, you know, you can see how it's all split up. Yeah. But it's, it, the way it kind of names the files as well, it's, uh, yeah, then it's, it's not like it, keep, it retains those original file names. It kind of does something. It renames them. Uh, yeah. So from what I've heard, uh, uh, it's because they're using a database kind of system. So everything is time stamped, which allows you to do all these things in real time quicker. Mm. So they, it's quite innovative what's going on behind Luna. Mm. And that goes, that goes into the next thing that I'm really impressed about Luna. Not only you've got autosave. As soon as you do something, you release the mouse. It's saved in the background. Uh, so you don't have to think about saving anymore. Uh, unlimited track, unlimited undo. It's your computer is is as much as it can take. So mm. don't, no limitation on there. Unlimited number of buses. And one of the main thing that I don't, th as far as I'm aware, and everybody, some people I'm sure are going to correct us on the <laughs> on the chat, but uh, I don't know of any DAW that can mix match uh, sample rate within the same se session. Well, it's interesting because one of Theo's just put in here, what's the main things that Luna that's better, you know, better about Luna than other DAW? So we've already covered quite a few, but I think that's probably a key thing. There. The key thing for me is yeah. that you can literally, Luna's going to run at the sample rate of your sound card and you're going to set that up into here, into settings, mm. uh, hardware. And here you set up what reference you're going to work out. It means that I could start working at 192, have super high-end recording. Mm. I'm getting into the mixing stage. I don't have enough power. 
I can bring my session at 44.1 or 48, mm. run more plugins, seamlessly Luna renders in the background a really high um, sample rate conversion, which not all sample rate converters are, are equal, as you has, it's there for you. That I think is quite, is quite something yeah. that, that is really cool. Yeah. Uh, another thing I love about Luna is the export. And uh, we, we can look at that, I mean, since we've got the session. Should we dive in maybe into the session? Let's have a listen. Think? What's huh? the track? What track so, have you got? Yes, that's the big thing as well. As you know, we had a label. We've always had a label at Point Blank. Yep. Point Blank Music, then Point Blank Recording three years ago. Went a little bit on the quiet side because it needs management uh, and everything. We've got now a full team working on this label. And we had our first release on end of August. Mm. It's a cover of Dreams. Fleetwood Mac. Fleetwood Mac classic. Yeah. So such a great track. Yeah. Um, and it's a kind of electro pop version of it, quite mm. pop. And um, yeah, shall we have a quick listen? Yeah, yeah. So, so you've got the you've got the s the stems here. Okay, good question. So uh, the producers kindly lend us the stems. Um, they are mastered already, and I thought it would be useful to see even on a mastered electronic material what some of the cool thing about Luna, mm. which is all about, it's all about analog and you know, that's, th that's very much UA philosophy of bringing that analog sound into the digital format. Um, I w just wanted to see how that would work. Originally done on Cubase. There's Originally done on Cubase or yeah. virtual scenes yeah. and, and etc. But I, I think the production is really, really, well, really bang on. If you haven't seen it, do check out the Harry Shadow deconstruction of his track. Yeah, that it's been put up recently. Up yeah. recently. I really enjoyed that. You know, really enjoyed how he talked about the vocal processing as well. Yeah. You know, uh, it's really yeah. interesting. Really, 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 really is, uh, and, and you can hear it, the production is, is really, really cool. Mm. Uh, let's have a listen. Yeah. Kind of a range page looks quite familiar, doesn't it? It so looks very familiar. Yeah, yeah. It? I mean, Logic, Pro uh, Tools, Cubase. Yeah. Very familiar. Yeah. What I love about that is obviously we can make it let make it a bit bigger. And then you've got different things that are coming up here. The view clip. Yeah. Automation. Your warping algorithm here. You can have the pans here automatically accessible, the inputs, outputs, and volume. So that's, yeah. that, that's quite useful, I find. So yeah. That gives you a sense of the track. Yeah, is so it possible to maybe uh, just kind of go through and listen to some of the stems on their own? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Uh, let's have a listen now, let me, so let's have a listen to the drums. So I've buzzed the drums. Mm -hmm. So at the same time, maybe I could start show one of the main thing about Luna is you may have heard about it is the whole leaf summing. Everybody was talking about it and being quite excited yeah. uh, about it. It's uh, it's one of the 80s Seri leaf desk that sounds really really nice. So just for really maybe really listeners that aren't aware about summing, what what how do you describe summing? Summing is in the in the uh, it happens automatically on the mixing desk yeah. because you have one cha separate channel 24 whatever the numbers of them and they all sum into this master section. Yeah. And they're all coming together. And the fact that it's all gluing in there, mm. there's some magic happening. You know, yes. Basically, it's part of the sound of the desk, the, the tone. We mm. talk about harmonic distortion, headroom, how mm. much headroom has a desk. Uh, less headroom gives you a more crunchy sound, a bit mm. more head, you know, I mean, all those characteristics. And the Neve is obviously a very famous uh, desk and known for is the quality of its sound. Mm. So, um, and, as you, and, and as we know, UA always uh, make amazing simulation uh, of those how of those hardware analog product. So it's essentially kind of giving you the desk. Basically. It's giving you the desk. So basically, yeah. you can have this summing on the master bus. Yeah. That's your master channel, or any bus that you create. And to create a bus, it's really simple. I could literally go select two of my channel here. Uh, do the, the short key is uh, Apple Shift B, or you would go into mixing here, create a bus. You create a bus. Let's. I'm going to show it. I'm not going to do it. But you create a bust, you select the outputs, the format, mono or stereo, and the NIF summing. 
the fact that you've got none, that means you could not have any. And also the fact that this list, you can expect at some stage more summing coming. I can mm -hmm. imagine an SSL, yeah. an API, yeah. you know, all those big desks. I, I imagine that that would be a natural step yeah. to go with that. And that's something that you don't have in any other door. Mm. You can create a summing by buses and you can create it, but it's just about the workflow, the fact that it's there, bing, mm. bing. You know, that, that for me is a big one. So let's have a listen to the drums first on their own. A nice feature is this peel as well. It, it's, I don't have a large multi-track here, there's only eight tracks, but if you have a, you know, a large multi-track, the spill allows you to focus only on what's attached to the bus. Right. So straight away you view to the track. Oh, and it does, it mimics that as well on, on, on the, the range page, yeah. Both of them. Okay. So again, it, it's a nice workflow, the way both windows are integrated, mm. it's really nice. Let's have a listen to those drums. So what I've done on the drums, is we've put the summing and I've put a tape as well and we'll go into the tape uh, quickly. But let's have a listen without nothing. So the, the stem were given to us with just the kick on its own mm. and the rest of the drums and percussion. Actually, in order to really appreciate, I'm gonna take what I've got on the master as well. So now we've got nothing. Okay. Let's start to build it that way, I mm. think, so we can start building all the plugins, I think that's going to make sense. Uh, uh, here we are. So just the drums. Now with the summing, see it's getting already spread away a little bit thin. What I love about the summing, you've got also an impedance, so it's changing really the tone and the level as well, so you need to compensate a little bit for that. Yeah. Uh, and here is the headroom, and the more you push the high by 2 dBs, the more headroom you're getting. Yeah. And if you go there, I could start crunching them a little bit. <coughs> Let me see it's crunching a little bit. And now I've got the uh, STR 102 on it. So another extension that comes in Luna is that tape extension. On single channel, you're, you can get either the Oxide or the Studer, if you have the license. Mm. The Oxide comes free, so at least you can already have that built in as part of the sound of Luna. Yeah. And I think that's what makes Luna have, have a sound. Mm. Um, the sub, I know the Nive is not free, um, it's about 200 and something. If it's your thing, play with it. You've got the 14 days demo. Yeah. See how you feel. That's always the great thing, isn't it, about UAD? Plugins. Exactly. It gives you a good, good amount of time. Exactly. Then, so then the danger is you, you use it on loads of tracks and it's like, I've got to get it now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, if it does the job for you, if it does what you wanted it to do, isn't it? Then yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's a winner. So what they've introduced lately, the latest update, is the ATR-102 as an extension. So on any of your buses or master, you can have it as well. Mm. So I've put it on the drums here. I've put a half inch, four, five, six, 30. It's probably one of the most neutral one. It's mm. the, that's what I've used all my life in, in the UK. Uh, I got into a studio, it was given to me. I was like, they were told, we use four, five, six. You line it up at plus four mm. over 185 for the guys who know how to line up tape machines. Uh, so I'm, I'm just using that as a default, the same with the summing, just to see what it does. But if you hear what it does, both of them, that's without. Right. See, you hear what's going on at the yeah. bottom end. The bottom end There's a round of bottom end, I think, isn't there? Yeah. Uh, absolutely. So, those are, that's the bi basic workflow of Luna that I really like, yeah. is the fact that you can have those buses very quickly. Mm. Uh, you can <coughs> put the tape extension very quickly. It's a different workflow. What I love about the tape as well is you can make it post or pre-fader, mm. which with a plugin you can't. And it's like a little bit the idea when you used to, shall we compare now the whole multi-track and we, we, uh, we, we can see yeah. the idea that I, 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 I want to, the, the point I want to put across. So quickly I'm going to select all my track. I am going to activate, deactivate the, So let's have a listen again to everything now together. Chaos, 
So we've got a sounding on the master, on the vocal, on the synth, and on my drum boss. And then I put a couple of tape machines on the vocal. I wanted to smooth them out a little bit, yeah. since I really wanted to get into that kind of smash up, you know, soften the transient a little bit. Yeah. So now let's have a listen, the whole multi-track without the tape and without me. So we have the need. So as soon as you put the need already, there's something that is happening a little bit. The transient are a bit softer. Mm. Maybe a little boost on the low mid, maybe. Mm. But then we bring the tape. Oh yeah. The bass. I mean, let's isolate quickly the bass. Still getting my head round about selection course, and yeah, yeah. It, it's gonna take me a while I, I, yeah. I think but um, let's have a listen to the bass quickly. That's without the tape and again I've put a, I've put a four five six of so again nothing special mm. you know but there's a lot of tape you can try I'm not gonna do a ATR demo but the 250 GP9 you know yeah. try because they all have their own characteristics. Yeah. So it really works, the, the, the bass, uh, uh, the, the tape for the bass and the key. So the cool thing about the workflow, like I was saying, you could put an insert and literally put a UAD plug-in here, the tape machine or any other tape machine. What I love about the post and pre is that with the post, you can do it here, suddenly it's like having your tape machine out as the output of your desk. And you would a little bit control how much goes into the tape machine mm. by pushing your master feather at the end of your console. That would be the way people used to do it. I mean, you can change the rack, but once it's been lined up, you don't want to touch it. So no, normally in the real life. And now, if I push my master, you can see on the meter here. Yeah. Now I'm really squashing the master. Obviously I'm on zero here, so I may have to go back down a bit after that. But So now we're already getting that kind of tape distortion, harmonic distortion, and you can push it and temp compression, yeah. etc. So it's one of the really good thing I love about uh, the Luna, the, 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 the tape extension and the way the workflow works. It's also a great teaching tool, isn't it? I mean, you know, it's, it's not so easy now to find these tape machines and to go into studios, you know, but to have that there. It, it's know. really amazing. Yeah. And uh, check that the video that you there and Fab Dupont, the, the, the French engineer, did yeah. uh, comparing a real ATR with the plugins right. in the studio mm -hmm. with a, a guy who's absolutely uh, amazing at setting up tape machine. And, and it's really troubling how close it is <laughs> uh, so you, you should really check it out yeah uh, one last thing quickly I think it's worth mentioning about Luna is uh, the qu things how you can access stuff on the on the region so I'm gonna make my again quickly you've got uh, a volume for each clips for each audio clips right. so you see here it has a, a DB I've that's selected good. everything, yeah. but every audio clip has a little uh, volume, so that that's what I find is great. Mm. Also, uh, pitch. Ah. So I can pitch my multi-track, and you know we talked about how quickly, because everything happens in the background with mm. the rendering, all those operations, you do them so quickly in Luna. Freedom. Well, who am I to keep that was like using tempo. a pitch bend, wasn't it? Ex that was exactly. Yeah. I mean, that that the quality of it is pretty yeah, decent as well. Pretty amazing. It's pretty amazing. So, are there, are there kind of different modes then? Yes, you have. So, we can quickly look at. I haven't done yet um, a lot of warping and fixing things if you like. Mm -hmm. I've edited uh, audio with it and I love it. The fact there's no um, toolbox, you literally if you go at the bottom, mm -hmm. depending on where you hover your mouse, right. you're getting different function. Yeah. You see here I can fade, mm -hmm. it's automatic, then I can shape my fade. Uh, here I do the length, you know, things like that. Here I select, I can select that across the whole, tr 
the, the, it's really natural. It's yeah. really fast. So the, 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 the time warping, if I go there, I'm going to look. Uh, uh, I need to select that. Here you can select a uh, time or tempo, mm. depending on how you want it to work. And here you've got about five algorithms. Polyphonic, monophonic, very speed, and then two designed by Luna. I believe the first three one have been licensed for another manufacturer who specialize in making algorithm. Mm. Really good quality one, and I forgot the name of the company, so somebody I'm sure will tell us. Right. Uh, and Luna have done their own razor blade and polyphonic mode. Right. They pretty sound amazing. So what we could do, as you, uh, I love also one of one that I love personally is always the, the very speed. I don't know about you, ski, you know, this idea of being able to very speed like on a tape machine. Yeah, yeah. Where you change both the speed and uh, the tempo. Yeah. Uh, the speed, the tempo and the pitch, sorry. Yeah. So I'm going to select them all and put them in very speed. I'm changing the tempo now. Ah. If I don't put it all in tempo, it's not going to happen. There you go. Love it. Again, how quickly it does it. Yeah. Nice. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, and then you've got uh, you've got the other polyphonic, monophonic, monophonic that you try, but they all mm. sound really good. Uh, you can access your warping here. If you clip here, you go warps. Yeah. And you see all the warping points? Right. Those the are best. warping points, and then you can start moving things. OK. So that, here that looks pretty similar to logic to me. Absolutely. The way that it created the kind of three bars. Absolutely. Yeah. If you create the three bar, you move that one without affecting the one yeah. on each side. It's, yeah. it's logic based. Mm. Uh, the, I've got to say, the detection of the warp point are, are very strong as yeah. well, are very good. So that, that's kind of the overview. I mean, there's a lot more that we could talk about. Um, maybe the last thing we can talk about quickly is the export, yeah. actually. And the, this workflow button, you've got a record MIDI workflow. And, oh yeah, no, no, we need to do something. I've got a surprise for you, Ski. Oh, right, OK. Uh, and we've got a, the, the mix down. Is here. So little thing here, mix down here. And I can select what it's cool about that one in terms of the mix down is you can select what you want to mix down. Right. So if you can see on the screen here, if you put everything through buses, you could select mix down all the buses, your main, and the separate. You literally, in one pass, export your master mix, your stems, and your individual files. Mm. Things like that is pretty cool, mm. I find. Uh, so what another feature of Luna uh, is the instruments. Ah, yes. They've done their own instrument, haven't they? Yeah. Uh, have, you, have you had a chance to try them at all? I have had bit? a play around, yeah, um, a little bit. So th with the Ravel, the piano, okay. which is the Steinway Model B grand yeah, piano. Yeah, yeah. Comes in at uh, 8 gig or something. So yeah, it's, yeah. yeah it's, it, but there, that's lovely. It's um, lovely, isn't it? And a Mini Moog as and well. And a Mini Moog as well. Both yeah. of them are, are, are great instruments. Yeah. Uh, shall we maybe, since you're here, Ski. Since I'm here. Since you're here. Oh, and there's a keyboard there. Oh, and, and there's a keyboard <laughs> here. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to create. Put this away. I'm going to create an, an instrument track. Okay. And uh, I'm wondering, Actually, do you fancy I'll. playing an instrument? Yeah, yeah maybe. Or, or, or two. What I was thinking is maybe get the mini moog up. Um, and there's a preset that I found called electro bass. Maybe kind of tweaking that a little bit. And then maybe to, yeah, take out the keyboards, and we could just try putting in a, 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 a bass sounds, line. Or something. Sounds, sounds like a plan. So I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna mute all the keys for now. Okay. Uh, I've got, what was the preset? Yeah, electro bass. Electro bass, I've got it here. Do you want to tweak it a I'll little bit? I'll tweak it, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got, I've got a reference here. I think I didn't do that much with it, to be honest, but um, let me just have a quick play around. There we go. Love that, okay. It's pretty much there already, to be honest. Sounds right, huh? OK, let's put this down. Don't do that anymore. Okay. And how's the latency as well? That's something we talked yeah, didn't talk about. Yeah. We don't have to set up latency. It's all happening in buffer size or anything. Yeah. It feels pretty good, doesn't it? It's a fixed buffer size for all the instruments, and it feels really pleasant. Yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, that's instantaneous. I love it. Um, OK, so to record, uh, I record it in the middle or something, so just to get going. Let's see if it feels right for you. Let me. Thank you. 
try that. See what? Yeah. Sounds great. Yeah. Uh, let's quantize that. Yeah. So recording MIDI here again. There's no Windows. There's only one window. So to to uh, edit MIDI, you literally go there, and th those are your notes. Yeah. There, there's some little cool thing that I like about about it. For example, the fold. I don't know if you noticed that the fold. Show basically we using the fold. It's only going to show you the notes that it's using. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's so you don't have all those space in between little things like that, which for drums, for example. Yeah, I think it's quite cool. Well, that's an Ableton thing. You Is know? it an Ableton? Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think that that's the kind of beauty, I suppose, isn't it? Now there's always a lot of borrowing between DAWs. Abs absolutely. Um, but you know, yeah, if you can put it, put all the best features into one yeah. DAW, then yeah, 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 yeah. So we can uh, we can quantize. Press the quantize button. Again, everything shows up in the inspector here. It's kind of an yeah. inspector on the left hand side. As soon as you click something, it gives you all the. Again, avoiding uh, too many menus, and I think that's their idea, trying to get things quickly accessible. Yeah. Uh, and it works really great. That's it, sync pretty well. Okay. Cool. Do you fancy? It's just let's, let's give uh, the Ravel a bit the of a spin, shall we? Yeah, yeah. Spin, shall we? Maybe, uh, so again, uh, another short shortcut. Apple Shift I, and we're gonna select the Ravel piano. Cool. I'd imagine it takes a while, doesn't it? To sort of buffer. Not too bad, actually. Look, it's already okay. it's already loaded up. It's 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 pretty impressive. Uh, let's check maybe some of the features. So. Uh, Pedal sound, we're gonna have it a little bit less. Uh, it's one thing that I felt with the Ravel, where the piano, the pedal was a bit loud. Okay. Uh, continuous. Uh, yes, I think I think we're, we're we're great. Close mic, you can select the mic. You see the focus on mm. the mic, and here, it's funny how the light is following the mic. <laughs> that you, uh, a lot of room. Close mic. So we're gonna close mic because it's 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 a pop production. I think it's more. Yeah. We want more. Should we listen to, to the sound? Yeah, play it, please. Sounds like a bass. Oh, there you go. Sounds great. Really, Sounds really great. usable. Yeah, 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 really usable. And, yeah. and you're gonna see. I find, I find it. It blends into the um, into the mix super well. Like you don't have to to EQ or anything. It just it sits. Uh, let's have a let's have a go. Cool. Learn the chords. <laughs> <laughs> no, great, that, that sounded great. Yeah, yeah, that sounded great. Let's, uh, yeah. So again, the mid, all the MIDI is here. It's all there for you. Yeah, yeah. You can quantize, or you could also decide to keep it. The strength, maybe you know something halfway in terms of the strength of the quantize, so it's not fully quantized. I know what you mean about it, sit, sitting in the mix. Yeah. Nothing. No EQ. Nothing. We, uh, we haven't even got any reverb or anything at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Just sit. That's something that really struck me on that. Cool. Um, I think we're, we're, we're running out of time. I think we? we're running out of time. Yeah. Um, Let me just quickly see if there's any any. If uh, there was any questions, question, yeah. happy to... Thanks so much as well. I mean, it's just, yeah, it's um, super inspiring. And I, I find it really inspiring. I think yeah. for me, it's like it makes me want to record again. Yeah, I yeah. pull up the guitar and, and starting to put it straight in and being yeah. able to drop in, drop out. And yeah, it, it, it's uh, and yes, I think in the workflow as a recording tool, it's probably for me the best way to record mm. audio yeah, yeah. and then bring it into whatever, you know. It's also a kind of no brainer if you've actually got the hardware already and it's free, you know. Have a go. Yeah, yeah. Have a go. Try, you know, it comes with free preamps. Mm. So try your preamp, see, see how it color your sound. Does it work for you? Mm. I, I, I swear, if you work with singers, for example, 
your singer and yourself as a producer are going to have a such much better experience recording. Mm. The recording process is becoming a bit more natural mm. for, for, for everybody involved, I think. That, that is the key for me. So just a couple of questions. Um, can you rewire Logic to Luna? So mm, best of both worlds. At that stage, not as far as I'm aware now. Right. No. What you do is Luna uses the uh, AF, yeah. which is the, the universal way to transfer project from Pro Tools to Ableton, yeah. vice versa, Logic. So all the NW now do an AF. You end up with a big folder. It tells its stamp your audio files onto the timeline. Mm -hmm. It doesn't keep the, 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 the plugins. It doesn't co keep the automation, but it stamps. So mm -hmm. literally, it's quickly to import audio. It's a way to import audio and making sure it's locking, yeah. locking into the. OK. Um, and then also, we, we've had a little look, very brief insight there, but what's MIDI editing like in Luna? Have you got deep into that yet? Or I not? haven't gone yet editing. I mean, it's the thing for MIDI editing. I still personally have used Logix since it used to be Notator on Atari, mm. since 88 or 89. Yeah. So it's 30 years of using one way to edit MIDI. Yeah. It's going to take me a while to to go out of that, if you like, you know, I'm yeah. so stuck in being able to see my numbers. Mm. The numbers also mean something to me. Like, you know, like you, you, you're a Logic and Ableton user. Mm. You know the subunits, you know what it, they mean in terms of timing and feel. Yeah. And, and, and coming out of that's going to take me a while, I think. Mm. Uh, I, I think MIDI is, for me, for me to be able to fully utilize MIDI, like I used to back in the days, I, I, I'm going to need a bit more feature personally, I yeah. think. Yeah, but I think like like we said before, you know, it's transferable skills and like just the fact they've got the fold feature there, you know, that's something that Ableton users are going to be familiar with. And uh, you know. Exactly, you yeah. know, but, but for if you don't do anything very, very involved media wise, it, it's absolutely fine. Mm. It's absolutely fine. Uh, Great. Well, I think that's all we've got time for, isn't it? That's all we've got time yeah. for. But thank you so much, Ski. Thank, thank you for, for coming, play some keyboard. And yeah, uh, yeah. It's great to be back with you live. Yes, I know. Well, we're, we're, um, you know, I'm sure this will be the start of many. You know, this should be a regular thing. I now. think we're, 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 the idea is we're going to come back probably on a monthly. Yeah. On a monthly one. And le le let's do some series. If, if, if you guys have maybe certain things, we would like us to. Yeah. Any requests? Any yeah. request about certain thing, techniques to discuss? We yeah. I, th I think we'd be very happy to put them in the chat, and we'll uh, yeah we'll look through them. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you very much, everyone. Have a great weekend. Yes. Uh, stay well and safe, everybody. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. We're trying to social distance as much as, as possible. As much yeah. as we can. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Brilliant. All right. Okay. Thanks a lot, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Take care.